G'day there. You're watching the Aussie BIM Guru. Today we're going through the second part of a workflow that I set up in a previous video. We're going to animate a Kinetics facade in Revit using adaptive components and Rhino inside. Pretty exciting. So I'd like to again give credit to the source for this base workflow um, by Jeremy Rowe, where I originally learned about adaptive components. Um, in this case, we're going to be using a slightly different approach to what he did. Um, in his case, he used uh, the actual Dynamo system in Revit. I'm going to be using Rhino inside to access the Ladybug package. And we're really just doing this to access the vectors of the sun, which are no longer accessible in later versions of Revit until Ladybug can work in it. So we're looking at kinet kinetic facades in this case. Um, so in this case, I'm dealing with the uh, Albaha facade um, in the UAE, uh, which opens and closes depending on the time of day. Now in this case, the, it's trying to block sun from entering the building to manage the heat load. And then at night, the panels all open up. So in this case, we're gonna build it to either block or receive the sun. So previously, um, we looked at building an adaptive component and we built the base component for the, the, the facade itself uh, using an adaptive component that can open and close depending on the value of a parameter that we set up called open factor. We're gonna, uh, in this case, map this to the conceptual mass. Um, actually, no, we've already done that. So we've already placed a conceptual mass using Dynamo, but we're gonna obtain all those panels we've placed in Rhino inside um, and then we're going to populate the data back depending on how close they are to the sun angle. And um, we're going to be making it move using Rhino Inside, Revit, Grasshopper, and Ladybug. So Rhino Inside is available from this link, and you will need a, a license of Rhino 6 and Rhino Work in Progress in order to run Rhino Inside. But it's a really brilliant little program, and I really enjoy it for quick geometry processing tasks. We're going to be using the incident angle of the sun versus the normal of all the panels against the base surface. So in this case, we will be comparing a flattened vector. So we're going to ignore the Z component of the sun angle. We're just comparing the base uh, vector of each to each other. And obviously the bigger or the smaller the angle, uh, the more open or closed the panel will become. So without further ado, um, we're just going to jump back to the base model, which you can find on my GitHub from the last part. And we've placed all these panels. Now I have rotated this model um, facing north in the case of my model, if you haven't already. So you may wish to do that. And you may recall that we can um, just take these panels and change their aperture. Now I'm not gonna wanna do that one by one, obviously, and I'm not gonna wanna do it just in, in bulk. Uh, we wanna make it more responsive and intelligent and responsive to something that makes sense. In this case, the angle of the sun. The more direct the angle of the sun, the more influence it has on the facade's open or closed nature. So I'm just going to open up Rhino inside under add-ins, Rhino beta. And I'm just going to boot up Rhino. So this is now Rhino running inside Revit. So I'm just going to maximize my 3D viewport. And I'm also going to go and boot up Grasshopper. So in this case, um, I'm going to be first of all collecting some elements from Revit. So I'm just going to place down a pair of bifocals so you can see the names of the nodes as I place them. So we're going to begin with a model categories picker. Um, so I'm just going to look for model categories picker. And if I can, if I hold down control, alt and left click, I can find the source of these nodes and where they come from. Really handy little shortcut in Grasshopper. In this case, I'm going to be getting an elements type picker. Uh, there it is. And this one is located just there on the Revit tab. Um, sometimes I search for them because I remember them by name more than I remember them um, by where they're located in the panels. Um, in this case, we're going to be retrieving the main panel. Notice that it filters down based on all the category elements. So in this case, we only have two generic models we can pick from. But we can pick the exact type that we want to use. And we're going to filter all the elements in our document uh, for the ones that match this type. So under filter, I'm going to take a type filter. Now, depending on your version of Rhino inside, you may have this little control added. Um, no, sorry, in the next one in the query elements tab um, that limits how many elements you collect. So under element query elements, you have the filter, which will receive the elements. But notice that in this case, I'm getting a warning because it's expecting 100 elements at the most and it's excluding the remainder. That's because there's this control called limit. A um, little bit of an annoying control, but I guess it just protects Rhino from loading too much. So in this case, I'm just gonna say I want 200 as my limit. So I'm gonna collect every single panel in my model. From here, we're gonna retrieve the elements location. So I'm gonna go elements, I'm gonna find the element location node, which actually returns quite a lot of things about the Revit element. Um, I'm gonna take my element. And in this case, um, we should receive a few things. So we have the element itself, um, we have its location, um, the handing of the element, the facing of the element, 
and in this case the work plane. So we're going to mostly work with the location and the work plane. The location being in the center of the panel and the work plane being able to give us the normal facing direction of the panel, which are both really important things to obtain. So if we go to Rhino, we can now see we actually have those elements in Rhino, which is pretty cool. Now this is just a preview geometry, so it's not the Revit element itself, it's just a preview of it. Now I could bake these into Rhino, but we're not really aiming to do that. We're just aiming to process some data and send it back to Revit from Grasshopper. So I'm just gonna turn off the preview here. And in this case, um, I am going to deconstruct this vector. So I'm gonna get a deconstruct vector. I'm gonna take my work plane. And then in this case, I'm gonna get a vector X, Y, Z to reconstruct it. And I'm only gonna reconstruct it using the X and the Y component. So in this case, the Z component will now be zero. So the, the, the vector has effectively been flattened onto the plane. Um, so in this case, I can check uh, that this is working just by getting an SDL or line start direction length. And I'll get the start as the location. And in this case, um, I will also take uh, the vector here as the direction. And for the length, I'll just put in an arbitrary number. If I go to Rhino, I can now see that I'm getting that facing direction for each panel. So I know that my normal is pointing away from my facade at each panel. So really efficient and really easy. Um, so a nice little start to the workflow. I'm just gonna move these away and I might just disable this node as well because it's not really necessary to the script. Now in this case, we need to get the angle of the sun to compare it to. So for this, we're gonna be using the ladybug package. So in this case, I'm gonna to go to my ladybug tab and I'm firstly just gonna place down my ladybug component to let the bird fly. I'm gonna import EPW and I'm just gonna retrieve a file path and I'm just gonna to path to an EPW file on my system. So you can download these from the Energy Plus website and find your region and just obtain the EPW file from there. So I'm gonna set this to one existing file and I'm just gonna pick that EPW file and connect this. And at that point, we should now have all that weather data available to use. At this point, I'm then gonna obtain a sun path component, a ladybug sun path, which can be located, uh, I think in this case, it always points to the Python tab, but I believe it's under visualize weather data just here. And in this case, we're just gonna be feeding in, um, first of all, just the location, nothing too complex. Now I wanna nominate the time of year that I'm working with. So I'm gonna need some sliders for this. Um, in this case, I'm just gonna move this a little bit away and I'm gonna create some sliders. So to do a slider, you can actually do a shortcut. First of all, we're gonna do the hour. I'm gonna do one arrow, 12, arrow, 23. And that will create me a slider between one and 23 placed at 12. And then I'm gonna create another one between one to six to 12. So this will be six between one and 12. So it's a really nice little shortcut, that one. And then in this case for the day, I'm just gonna do one, 15, 30. Just so we don't run into errors with months that don't contain 31 days. Okay, so at this point I have my time, my month and my day. So I believe in this case, we'll do our hour, we'll do our day and we'll do our month. And you can notice that it sort of injects those values into the sliders when you connect them, which is really cool. And now this should output a single vector for the sun. So we can see now we have the direction of the sun. Now currently this is the sun facing towards the building. So we actually wanna turn this away to measure the angle between it from the same point. So in this case, I am actually gonna reverse my vector. So I'm gonna take this sun vector and flip it the other way around. So now we're pointing away from the facade normal. What I can do now is measure the difference between this and the normal angle of each panel. So I'm just gonna take a vector angle and I'm just gonna take an angle between two vectors. I'm gonna take vector A and vector B. Now at this point, we should have a range of numbers in this case, reflecting the angle between, in this case. So we have the, the reflex angle and the angle in radians. So we could convert the radians angle to a whole decimal. Um, in this case, um, I think there might be a way to do it. Um, I think we just get a degrees node. And now we can see that angle. And they look much more like angles that we'd expect to see. And this is the angle for each panel versus the sun. 
So at this point, we are gonna to need to convert this into a remapped range between zero and one, because at this, at this point, we're gonna set the parameter of the panel, which is within what we call the domain of these values. So we firstly need to find out the domain of our angles that we have. So we're gonna use a node called bounds to do this, which will return a data type of domain between there. So we can see we now have 32 up to 64. It's up to you whether you map your domain in this way or if you map your domain to between say zero and 90, because we're gonna remap. So you can essentially fit this to any width of data as you choose. Um, now in this case, I'm just gonna remap this explicitly so that the least incident panel will always be fully closed and the most incident panel will be always fully open or vice versa. So I'm gonna be using a remap numbers node. In this case, I'm gonna take my original values being my degrees, my source domain, being my bounds. And for my main domain, I'm gonna set up a little trick to be able to flip it open or close. I'm gonna collect a what's called a stream filter, which lets us send through one of two options depending on the outcome of a Boolean or a true false. I'm gonna get a false, uh, I'll get a normal Boolean toggle actually. And I'll just set it to false at the moment. I'm then gonna create two domains using a construct domain. And I'm gonna construct two domains. In one case, I'll send through this domain and another will send through this one. So the way that this works, and I'll build my two domains as well. Currently I have zero to one. What I'll do is just create a panel by doing a double forward slash and a panel doing a double forward slash one. Now by default, domains are between zero and one. But sometimes I do like to just visually show what these inputs are for a user, just in case they don't understand how everything's been set up. So we now have a domain between zero and one, or between one and zero. So at the moment our stream filter is set to false. So we feed through gate zero. If I toggle, now we feed through gate one. So just with a single input, I can flip the result that we're gonna feed through for the remapped domain. And if you remap a domain back to front, it essentially flips the values across that domain as well. So this essentially means we can open or close the relationship between the sun and the panels with a single input. So I'm gonna send through the result of this remapped domain to my remap number node. And at this point, we should have a set of numbers between zero and one along the domain of the range of the angles. And we can use this number to actually control the aperture of the panels. So we're pretty much done, which is pretty cool. What I might do is just go and just make sure everything's turned off from a preview perspective, which it is. And we need to finish up with an element set parameter. So we'll get a set element parameter. And we're also gonna take our original elements from way back over here. You may wish to right click on this and make it a hidden input so it doesn't cross your code. And then we're gonna create a key. So in this case, the key is gonna be the name of the parameter that controls the panel. In this case, open factor with a capital O. So I'm gonna go back to Grasshopper and just type the name of that parameter. And I'm gonna connect this to the key that we're setting. And finally, for the values, um, these will just be uh, the parameters for the panel. So what I might do is just um, make, the, make the facade visible because the moment that I run this, the panels are all gonna respond to the sun straight away. I'm gonna feed through my remap numbers and fingers crossed, voila. So you can see at the moment we're blocking the sun. So at the moment we're around the middle of the day and the middle of our facade is blocking the sun and the sides of our facade are peeling open as the sun is no longer as incident to them. So if I go back into Grasshopper, I can change that relationship with this input and I can invert that relationship to receive the sun instead. Likewise, I can go and change the time of day. I can say maybe it's nine o'clock in the morning and we should expect to see the area where the sun is focused now peel open on the facade. So you can start to see the impact that you can have with the sun upon your facade. Now, because we're dealing with Rhino inside and heavy adaptive components, unfortunately you can't really animate the facade very easily. I find that there's a bit of chug on the speed, um, unfortunately, which is a bit of a bummer. Uh, it would be cool if it could be a little bit faster, but I guess we are dealing with a headless program going through an API, so it's forgiven. Um, but you can see if I drag it, obviously it's gonna spin an hourglass a little bit. So a bit of a bummer, but there you go. So this could be used for you to try and optimize your facade. Now obviously if there's no sun, then there's no sun angle. 
So at certain hours of the day, you'll get an error potentially. You could change the bounds of this input if you wanted to, um, just to make it fall between logical times like nine until maybe four o'clock. That way it's always gonna generate a sun angle. And now you can see as you change the time of day, everything will shift. Um, so pretty handy. Um, you may wish to rename this input. Um, in this case, this is probably, probably best named of are we blocking the sun? Because when it's true, um, we do block the sun, I believe is how we've set this up. Because uh, currently it's 12 o'clock. Okay, and so now actually at the moment, uh, it's actually received some by the looks of it. So now we don't receive the sun, and as a result, we block it. So a handy little workflow that can be applied to any type of kinetic or adaptive component that can respond to a value between a domain. Handy little workflow, and I really enjoyed figuring out how to make this workflow work. I actually did a similar tutorial to this really early into the history of the channel um, quite early on, and the workflow wasn't really that well put together compared to this one. So hopefully this helps teach you about how you can use Rhino inside and also how you can influence adaptive components using more creative workflows such as the angle of the sun. Um, so good stuff, there we go. So the files for this will be on GitHub um, if you just wish to download them and try it out. Um, I'll upload the script and also the, the base model as well. Um, so there we go. If you're not already following and subscribing, uh, feel free to do so. I make two videos a week and aim to do so for a while. And I look forward to seeing you in future videos. Thanks, take care. Thank you.